how would I know whether my future me will thank me for all these sacrifices? You have to find that balance and understand whether will it be worth it. If I keep on thinking like a freelancer, I won't be able to build my income. I won't like to be that person to make 100% of my income. I would like to be to have 100 people to make 1% of my income. So that way, I can grow my net worth easily and more freely. The aim of the goal is to build up your net worth by building assets. Take your time, try out new things, and it's okay to make mistakes along the way. Have you ever wondered what it truly means when we talk about someone's net worth? Is it just a fancy financial term, or does it hold the key to understanding a person's financial success? I'm Rashan Gidwani, and joining us today is Edmund Chung, the founder of Hustle Venture. Hi, Edmund. Welcome to the show. How are you? Hi. Thanks for having me along. Yeah, absolutely. So let's begin. Could you break down the concept of net worth into simple terms, demystifying it for our audience and helping us understand how it impacts our financial lives? So how would you define your net worth is based on your assets and liability. So if you have more assets than liability, naturally you will have a bit more net worth. If your assets minus your liability equals to a negative net worth because you have a higher liability. So it's a balance between both. You will have to try to build up your assets so that after you minus off your liability, you will still have a bit of your net worth there. So the, the aim of the goal is to build up your net worth by building assets. For example, you can own watches, stocks, whatever, as long as there are assets that grow over time. Can you share with us what specific event or experience inspired you to delve into understanding your net worth? I think most of us during the pandemic, we had nothing much to do. And I found that I wanted to make money online because there wasn't any other ways to make money. And as a student back then, I wanted to find ways to make additional source of income. And that's where I learned to do some research and deep dive into net worth and growing my net worth from there. So from there, I learned to try out many side hustles, build up my net worth over time, doing some part-time jobs as well. And it really did help me to learn what I must do to build my net worth and grow my assets over time. What were some of the initial financial goals you set for yourself when you started on this journey? Can you share a mistake you made along the way and what you learned from it? When I started my financial journey, I made sure to set multiple checkpoints in my journey to reach the $100,000 goal. So like, for example, $10,000, $30,000. Every point is an achievement and I, I choose to celebrate every part of it. I think a lot of people missed out on celebrating all these small achievements but they do help over time. Making mistakes is a good learning point in finding out what ways you can learn to improve your financial journey. What are the better alternatives for you to grow your assets and net worth? So I've learned to try out multiple side hustles and it's okay to fail along the way and just keep trying new side hustles and try to build more income stream. So I've a total of six income streams by the time I was 24. So some of the interesting ones that I've tried out is such as pet boarding, options trading and vending machine business. My vending machine business didn't do so well, so I was quick to let it go. But I ventured out into my pet boarding business and it was able to generate me about $2,000 back in the days. Okay, what exactly is pet boarding? Pet boarding is somewhat like a caretaker job. So the owner will send their pets over to my house and I will take care of their pets for a day or two, depending on how long they'll be leaving their dog or their pets over for. So essentially it's animal care. Yeah. Okay. How did you find out that this was something that interested you? This was an income source that I, not many people know about it and that it is a lucrative income that you can make remotely. So all I had to do was set on the app that, oh, I'm free at this date and anyone would like to have a pet boarding, I'm available for pet boarding service and you can just drop your pets over and I'll take care of them and it helps build over time the trust and over time I built my income stream from there as well. Now achieving a $100,000 net worth often requires balancing financial discipline with enjoying life. How did you strike that balance and what sacrifices or compromises did you make along the way? I remember when I first chased my $100,000 net worth, it was very hard for me. I had to sacrifice a lot of family time, 
friends' time. Even my friends at one point was questioning whether what I'm doing is worth it. And if I look back, I would think about it. I was like, how would I know whether my future me will thank me for all these sacrifices? We will never know. You have to find that balance and understand whether will it be worth it. So if it's worth it, then sure, go ahead. Save up that amount. Try not to sacrifice so much of your time, mm. to, of your family time and friends. Try to set some time allocated for them. For example, right now I set some of my weekdays and weekends dedicated for them as well. Were there any unexpected challenges or setbacks you faced while trying to reach your financial milestone? And how did you overcome them? And I had six side hustles back then. I was like, oh my God, there's too much side hustles and I don't have a lot of time allocated for them. I think one of the things where we are trying to build our income is time management and setting aside your time for their side hustle is very important. How I overcome all these challenges for time management is bringing people along. And at the end of the day, if I keep on thinking like a freelancer, I won't be able to build my income faster. I have a mentor that taught me that I won't like to be that person to make 100% of my income. I would like to be that one person that have 100 people to make 1% of my income. So that way, I can grow my net worth easily and more freely. I think a lot of people are stressed because they're trying to achieve their financial net worth early or faster and that they work themselves too hard, too fast. And my suggestion is learning how to allocate your time and allocate some of your skills to train people so that they can take over some of your skills. I think that's something that many freelancers should learn to take up and hopefully become a business owner themselves. That's how I started my own hustle venture business and that's how I grew it from there. Based on your journey from facing financial setbacks to building multiple income streams and growing your net worth, what one piece of advice would you give our audience about building their own wealth? Take your time, try out new things, and it's okay to make mistakes along the way. These kind of mistakes are where you can grow and understand what are the assets that you would like to build. For example, some people like to own watches, toys, collectibles. They are great assets as well. If you like what you are growing your asset with, I'm sure you can grow it bigger over time as well. Okay, brilliant. Thank you so much for joining us and we can do this again sometime. Keep in mind that your financial journey is a blank canvas awaiting your personal tale of wealth creation. Begin now, define your objectives and craft your inspiring wealth narrative. You've been watching Tea Time Tuesday. Until next time, keep seeking knowledge and financial empowerment.